to our Family Life program. It is so good to have our guests, our families, our friends joining us this evening. My name is Jasmine and I'm here with my husband, Pastor Sean Dowding. A special good evening to everyone. Do you know today I was reminded of how blessed we are to have family. It was our son's 12th birthday and we spent some time together eating, celebrating, laughing and enjoying that time. But it was also a time for reflection and for Thanksgiving. And you know, sometimes we only wait when it's for when it's a birthday or a special celebration to spend that time together. But I want to encourage you, all of our families, whatever shape or size your family is, to take some time out. Even if it means you're living by yourself and you have to make a phone call, but take some time out to reflect, to give thanks, to celebrate the joy of being part of a family. And if you don't have a direct family member, then you are part of the family of God. So reach out to me, reach out to pastor, and we'll be happy to spend time with you talking and reflecting and giving thanks. Okay, thank you, Jasmine. And it's time for us to seek the Lord in prayer. I'm gonna invite you to bow your heads as we begin this moment once again and ask God to bless us. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for this emphasis. We are talking about family. We are talking about the problems that plague families. But we are so thankful that we are also talking about the solution to all these problems, which is you, O oh Father, which is Christ Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit. Bless us now as we go through this program and as we worship you and as we learn at your feet. We want to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it's time for us as well to take a little recap of what has been going on. So I want to remind you that on Sabbath we started, which is Saturday, we started with when a man loves a woman. And I invite you to go back to the channel, YouTube, and check that out. And then on Monday night, we had Elder Robert talking, Robert Webb, talking about the green monster. You want to find out what that is. Go back to our channel. And on Tuesday night, which was last night, we had Pastor Ivor Richardson talking about a tangled web. Friends, when you check out what a web is by a spider, then you recognize it has so many different purposes. They do silk wet webs. They also do dry and strong webs. <laughs> And they both have different purposes. They can be to attract food, not to track, but to attract food. It is also a place for home. It is all a, also a place for storage. It's a place for courtship. And in a tangled web, we found out some things about the life of Hagar and Sarah and Abraham. To cut the story short, we do a lot of things to fix our problems and we get into trouble. We get entangled. We lose sight of the blessing. We lose sight of the vision. We lose sight of the bigger picture because we want an immediate solution. Friends, I invite you to take a look one more time at our channel for last night's program. And as we move on tonight, there is something special awaiting you. So I invite you, my friends, to stay tuned as we move along. Okay, great, thank you so much. So um, we are now going to hear from our resident singing evangelist. I am always impressed when we have someone who has a fantastic voice and is able to sing so well sitting down. I don't think I could do that myself, but he, he has blessed us every single evening with such heavenly music. But before he, um, just after he presents his song, we will have Elder Adrian Alvaranga, who is going to speak to us on the topic of, um, it's the title is Between a Rock and a Hard Place. And I'm sure we have each had that experience of being between a rock and a hard place. And he is going to focus on the story and experience of um, Abraham. 
But be before he speaks to us, let's turn to our singing evangelist, Mark Prentice. Welcome again. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's good to be here. I want to encourage someone to let you know when you're up against that rock in a hard place, <laughs> uh, keep your soul anchored in the Lord and you'll be all right. Amen. Amen. My soul is anchored in the Lord. storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't see and just in case the winds keep on, they keep blowing in my life. My soul has been, it's been anchored in the Lord, in the Lord. Storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. My Lord, still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore i know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared oh but if the storms don't cease and just in case the winds they keep on they keep blowing in my life my soul has been it's been anchored in the lord in the lord That sometimes in this life we're gonna be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce, my Lord. But in the Word of God, I've got an anchor, my anchor, that keeps me steadfast. And unmovable despite the tides. Oh, but if the storms don't cease, and just in case the winds keep on, they keep on blowing in my life. My soul has been it's been anchored in the Lord oh, my 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 soul has 
freshman been anchored, my soul's been anchored, my soul's been anchored, has your soul been anchored, though the billows may roll, and the breakers may dash, but I, I shall not sway, because he holds me fast, so are the days and clouds in the sky, I know it's all right, because the Lord is not my soul, my, 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 my soul's been anchored. My soul has been anchored in the Amen. 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 Wow. 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 Thank you so much, Brother Mark. I have a feeling that you were looking at my notes. I have a feeling that you knew what the sermon was about. Oh, I have God. a feeling that the, the Lord Spirit. must That's have told Spirit. you. <laughs> he told me. He told me. What's going on tonight? That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's no way, there is no way you could have chosen that song on your own. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. amen. My soul is anchored. Friends, you already know what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about um, Abraham's life, and we're going to look at it under the topic um, between a rock and a hard place. And as Mark opened up, he said, hey, you know, if you find yourself in that space, but <laughs> make sure your soul is anchored. And I feel like that might be the executive summary <laughs> of tonight. Let me just start off by saying good evening, friends. Good evening, family. I hope that you have truly been enjoying this series. I hope you've been having a great time. I certainly have been having a great time. And I hope you have been enjoying it. We have prepared um, this series for you, for your family, for our family, for all of us, for such a time as this. And I hope you're not selfishly enjoying it by yourself. I hope you have been inviting your family members to come and join um, with you. If they're, if, if they're somewhere in your house right now, go and call them, tell them, come sit with me in the living room, by the TV. Maybe you have your own device, go on their device, pull it up for them, show them the link, send them the link. If they're overseas, you need to let them enjoy the series with you. I, I, I am sure you would not go out into the backyard and start a barbecue alone, would you? I mean, no matter how good you are at barbecue, no matter how good the food may come out, it would not taste as good unless you have friends and family around you to share with it. And so, friends, as we are feasting, as we are feasting on the word of God, as we are learning from God himself, don't feast alone, please. Go ahead. Share it with someone. I um, want to continue just to say thanks to um, our singing evangelist, Brother Mark Prentice, and special thanks to our family life directors, Brother and Sister Pierre Louis. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that you have organized this week, and I'm happy that you have given me this opportunity. Um, you know, Brother Pierre Louis, last night I, I saw how you quickly <laughs> and confidently answer that question that was thrown at you. <laughs> and, and, and I thought to myself, you know, <laughs> this man is wise. This man is wise because any delay, Brother Pierre Louis, could have been deadly, but you just quickly answered it and moved on. You know, I'm learning from you. I took some notes and all of that. <laughs> 
Brother and Sister Pierre, we thank you so much. And of course, to Pastor and Sister Dowden, you guys are doing an amazing job hosting together. And let me say, let me say <laughs> that your audition for Wednesday night is going well. <laughs> we can talk about that after. All right. Um, that being said, I'm looking at the time. I know what time we have to end. And I'm always that preacher that likes to keep things on time. I do have a few things that we need to get through tonight, but I want to make sure that we have the time and that we also keep it on time. We have been looking at dysfunctional families in the Bible, and we have not just been focusing on the dysfunction, as Pastor reminded us, but we have been finding hope and we have been finding redemption. You know why? No one is perfect. No family is perfect. We may have come far, <laughs> but we all have a little ways to go. There's still things that, you know, God is working out in me and working out in you and working out in our brothers and our sisters and our parents and all the other members of our family. So let's just continue this journey. I am continuing the journey. I'm building on the backs of those that went before me um, from Pastor to L.A. Robert Webb and specifically Pastor Ivor Richardson, who last night um, looked at a tangled web. If you have not seen um, specifically um, a tangled web, make sure you check it out after uh, my program tonight because the kind of two are a little bit closely related, if that's all right. All right. Um, I want us to spend some time in the scriptures, so I'm going to invite you to turn with me to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 21. We're going to read a couple of verses, and then I'm going to talk to you, maybe a little bit of preaching and teaching. Um, yeah, Let's preach, teach, and reach. Is that all right? <laughs> Genesis chapter 21, I'm giving you some time to find it um, just before we read the word of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven. Into this moment, I ask, O oh God, that you will fill it with your presence. As we prepare to read from your word, I ask, O oh God, that you will come by here, that you will lead us, that you will guide us. Oh, Father, whatever we read, O oh God, may we find a lesson from it, dear Jesus. May we make changes in our lives, dear Father, not just for ourselves, but for all our family members as well. I know you desire to save families, dear God, so save families tonight. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. All right. So Genesis chapter 21. And I'm going to read for you um, from verse 1 all the way down to verse 11. And I'm going to read it to you from the NIV. I trust that you are there and you can follow along with me. The Bible says this, Genesis chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, and as he has said, the Lord did for Sarah what he promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to, I, to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah for him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Verse six, Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. It's, it's interesting. On the Underline, if you can, in your scriptures or highlight it if you're using a, a device, that little term laughter. We're going to come back to that. Notice how Sarah is so happy. She says, God has brought me laughter. And everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham and Sarah? Sorry, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet, I have borne him a son in his old age. You can just see the joy on Sarah's face as I'm reading this. Verse 8. The child grew and was weaned. And on the day 
Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had borne to Abraham was mocking. Verse 10. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. Verse 11. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned its son. Wow, wow, wow. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. We just read Genesis chapter 21 from verses 1 to 11. Now, what is going on here? It seems to me, it seems to me, friends, that after the birth of Isaac, Sarah gets a little bit more harsh. Sarah is bitter, man. Something is not right. No, 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 I'm not saying, I'm not even suggesting that Sarah represents all women, but certainly Sarah has two sides to her. <laughs> remember, remember that after Sarah had convinced her husband to sleep with Agar, the moment Agar got pregnant, Sarah changed. Sarah increased Hagar's burden. Sarah became a hard taskmaster. Sarah became a slave driver. She deals so harshly with Hagar that Hagar flees from her presence. Hmm. And, 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 and I wonder to myself, what could cause such a sudden shift in Sarah's behavior? Could it be, could it be that secretly Sarah was hoping that Abraham was really the one with the problem? Because, 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 because I'm wondering, I'm wondering she, she, if she really didn't want Agar to get pregnant. Because what could cause you to get so upset now that Agar is pregnant? You see, you see, if Abraham went into Hagar and Hagar could not conceive, <laughs> then, then we would know that Hagar is firing blanks, as they say where I'm from. But 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 what we'd say, Abraham, is you are the problem. You see, you see, in those days there are no fertility tests. So they know that it's one of them that has the fertility issue. And, and, and I'm wondering to myself, if, er, if, 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 Sarah, if Sarah, for a moment, for a second, I'd said, you know what? Maybe it's not me as a problem. Maybe it's Abraham. <laughs> you see, Sarah had only been with one man, just this man, Abraham. Abraham is the one who would, of course, have taken her virginity. And, 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 and since I mentioned that, let me just do a quick pause for the cause here. God still expects, God still expects that we will wait until marriage. Yes, it's still a biblical doctrine. No matter what the word says, the word says, no matter what your school friends say, the Bible says you wait until marriage. All right, let's continue. So, so somehow I'm wondering, maybe in the back of Sarah's mind, she's saying to herself, hmm, hmm, I'm probably not the problem. And, 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 and she develops this itch <laughs> that she has to scratch. <laughs> After all, Sarah is a, is, is, is a very beautiful woman. What could be wrong with her? Agar, Agar is an Egyptian. And, and, and Egyptians are also known to be beautiful women. But, but, but you know, they, they, they're always, you know, dolled up. <laughs> they're always well adorned. They always look alluring, these Egyptian women. But, but that beauty takes a little bit of time to prepare. 
Sarah on the other hand, Sarah, she, she, she's a natural beauty, man. She doesn't need any makeup to be a cutie. She's a queen. She is so supreme and so much beautiful she is that Pharaoh had noticed Abraham's wife and Abraham had lied and said, no, no, she's just my sister. This is the same Sarah we are talking about. Beautiful woman. And when Hagar conceives, she takes the wrath out upon her. Why? It, 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 it is strange, friends, because the child that Hagar has is really Sarah's. So, 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 so what would make Sarah so upset? As a man, I cannot pretend to fully understand what is going on in Sarah's mind. But to me, the problem is not really the problem. Why is she so mad when she finally gets a child through her surrogate? That was the plan. So why are you so upset? And let me give you a little bit of background. Um, in terms of how the culture worked at that time. You see, at that time, in those days, in that culture, it is expected that wives would bear children. So strong is the expectation. It might not even be optional. Wives, you would have to bear child. That's the expectation. That's your that that that, that that's that's what you, you you have signed up for as a wife. Matter of fact, go even further. <laughs> the expectation is that you will pr produce a male child, a male here for your husband. And if you were not able to do that, it is normal for you to submit your handmaid or your servant so that your servant would act as your surrogate to bring forth a child. And if that child born by your servant, that child would now be considered yours. So what is Sarah upset about? Why was she so angry that she dealt harshly with Hagar and Hagar had to flee? Let's fast forward. Now we're in Genesis chapter 21 and we read about this feast. This feast that's been held to celebrate, to commemorate Isaac being weaned. So Sarah now has her own child. She now has Isaac. And Isaac is being weaned. And in this feast, in this time of happiness, Ishmael mocks. The Bible says that Ishmael mocks. Isaac and Sarah caught him. He, he, his mocking seems to stir up some sort of residual anger in Sarah, and she flies into a rage, demanding that he and the mate, sorry, not, not the mate, sorry, he and his mother, which is Abraham's second wife. <laughs> Hagar, because you know they got married for that. So he and his mother must be cast out. Sarah is mad. No, they have to go. And, 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 and as I'm reading it, I'm saying to myself, what has Ishmael done? Ishmael is still a young boy. He, he's maybe about 14 years old, maybe 15. And, and we know this, if someone is doing the math, we know this because when, when Ishmael was born, Abraham was 86 years old. 
And then when Isaac was born, Abraham is 100 years old. So, so Ishmael is about 14, maybe going on 15, when Isaac is weaned and when he laughs. So, so, so what could it be that this young teenager, Sarah, your own son, yes, he's still your son, even though he came from Agar, he's still your son. What could he have done that is so serious that you want to put him out of the house? You know, parents who have teenagers know that teenagers at times, they, they can press all the right buttons. Yes, man. Teenagers can be challenging at times, but, 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 but still, what could your teenager do so bad that you want to just throw them out the house like that? Is, 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 is Ishmael's mocking so serious that you have to put him out the house? I did a little bit of digging, and I realized that the word for mocking it's a little Hebrew word, sarkak. It's actually the same word for laughter. <laughs> All right. The word for mocking that Ishmael was doing is the same word for laughter. And, 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 and not just that. But it's actually the same exact word that was translated for Abraham's laughter and for Sarah's laughter when they both laughed in response to God's promise. <laughs> Mercy. I know you missed that. I know you didn't catch that. He that is without sin, Sarah, cast the first stone. You see, whatever laughing or mockery Ishmael was doing that resulted in him being cast out, the Bible is saying it's the same laughter, it's the same thing his parents did to God. They mocked God. They laughed at God. Sarah, who is the instigator here, she actually, she actually went a step further, even though she has an eviction notice for Ishmael in her hand, when she laughed at God, when she did the same thing, she went further. She turned around and lied to God and said she did not laugh. But what a merciful God we serve him. Because, because he looks past our faults and sees our needs. Sarah, because of her laughter, and Abraham, because of his laughter, they didn't even get a chance to name their child. <laughs> God prescribed the name Isaac. And you know why? Isaac literally means he laughs. And it should have been a reminder. It should have been a reminder to Sarah that even though Ishmael laughed at his brother, Isaac, Sarah, you can't judge him because, be, be, because you also laughed. Sarah, somehow, though she was blinded by the beam in her eye, she was able to clearly see the speck in Ishmael. Mercy. Have mercy on us, God. Because, friends, that is how we allow our families to fall into dysfunction. We are too quick to judge. How quick we can be in our family, parents, where we judge children, we chastise children for the same mistakes that we have made. Sarah is kicking Ishmael of the house for mocking, for mocking a man, his little brother. When God did not kick her out, 
when she dared to mock God and turn around and lie to God about it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. And as we go further in the text, you realize that we now uncover what is the real issue. Sarah was not that concerned about the laughter in and of itself. Because hear what she says. Get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son, Isaac. Yes, ma'am. So something else going on here. Something else is going on here. Sarah has other things boiling up in her heart. She is really more concerned about the fact that Ishmael is the firstborn. And even though Isaac is the promised heir, she knows that her husband Abraham is a good man. She knows that Abraham is going to do justice by Hagar. She knows he's going to split the inheritance. And she doesn't want that. She doesn't want that. Abraham is now older. And he's getting closer to the point where he's going to have to name his heir. And Sarah is not going to have that. So, so as I read it, I wonder to myself, if Sarah was just looking for a fight? Was she just looking for an opportunity to just kick them out? She, what, what, what could she have been, been holding up in her heart for so long? Why, why, why she want to kick out the little boy and kick out the mate? Sorry, not the mate. Kick out Hagar, <laughs> the other wife. Sarah must have been living with that guilt because, because she knows, she knows that she has caused a self-inflicted wound. From the moment Hagar conceived, Sarah has been wounded. It's a self-inflicted wound. And for 13 years, she's probably miserable that Abraham has to split his attention between her and his other family. Two families have been living under the same roof. It's seldom a good idea. It really can create serious conflicts. Why? Because we tend to be selfish. <laughs> we tend to think about ourselves first. And we will fight and we will compete even for the smallest things. When God says, leave and cleave, God knows what he's talking about. When God says, one man to one wife, he knows what he's talking about. Sarah wants them out. Let me give a little bit more background. In Ancient Eastern law. The law provided protection for children born to the second wife. The law prohibited this inheriting of the firstborn of a slave wife, <laughs> which is Ishmael, in the event that the barren upper class wife should later bear a son, <laughs> which is Isaac. Even though the upper class wife's son would supersede the slave's wife, being the legal firstborn, the law prevented you from disinheriting him completely. What does that mean? Isaac, being the firstborn, was never threatened. So Sarah just doesn't want Ishmael to have anything. Have mercy. <laughs> have mercy. And, 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 and that's exactly what she says. She says, the same woman and her son shall not have any inheritance with my son. Can you imagine that? And, 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 and because of this, 
Abraham now finds himself. And that's the topic tonight. Abraham finds himself between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> Abraham knows that this thing that Sarah asks him to do is not only wrong, it's illegal. <laughs> It, it, it's against all customs at that time. He now has two tough choices to make. Either he finally puts his foot down and stand up to Sarah and say, honey, you have a track record for making me do horrible things. <laughs> Mercy. Honey, enough is enough. I won't do it. <laughs> he, he, he has to put his foot down. <laughs> you know what? In the chat, husband, right? What you would say to stand up to your wife? <laughs> you know what? Never mind. Don't don't write. Don't write. <laughs> we, 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 we're, trying, we're trying to bond the family. You know, we're not, we're not trying to spread the dysfunction. So don't write anything. Leave it alone. Let me continue. <laughs> Abraham has to. He has he has to put his foot down, man, and say, Sarah, enough is enough. Th this thing is this thing is rough. Maybe the words I'm using is not the best way. But, but, but Abraham knows that if he sends them away, they're in the middle of a desert. If he sends them away, they're going to have to cross the desert. They will not survive. They will die. There's no Uber out there in the desert. There are no local airports nearby. His firstborn is going to die with his mother. If he puts them out. And that, and, 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 and that is weighing heavily on Abraham's heart. But even before Solomon writes Proverbs 21 and verse 9, Abraham knows that if he doesn't listen to Sarah, though, <laughs> he won't hear the end of it. <laughs> Hence, I said, he's between a rock. On a hard place, anywhere he turns, Maka will juke him, <laughs> meaning thorns will prick him. <laughs> yes. There's no easy win here. I know you're wondering what Proverbs 21 verse 9 says. So let me tell you. The NIV says, <laughs> and this, this is what Abraham, I think, knows even before Solomon writes it. Abraham says, <laughs> um, Solomon says in Proverbs 21, it's better to live on the corner of the roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. What's Solomon trying to say? You have to keep peace in the house. So, so here, here is poor little Abraham. He, he can't do what Sarah wants him to do, but he can't tell her no. <laughs> because he knows he's not going to hear the end of it. He, he, he has already gotten himself in entanglements with Agar. He has already had the son, Ishmael. And now he has another son, Isaac. And Sarah, who, who weaved all that web. <laughs> but she's not a spider. I'm not going to call her a spider. No, she's not. But she weaved all of this web, got him in this entanglement. She now says, kick them out. Kick them out of the web. <laughs> Abraham is caught between a rock and a hard place. Friends, have you ever been caught between a rock and a hard place? Have you ever looked to the left and looked to the right and, and, and not seen any positive solution? Tonight, as I have to wrap it up, I'm going to make it very easy for you. Let me tell you what to do when you are caught between a rock and a hard place. When you have to make a decision, it's simple. Choose the rock. <laughs> I'm going to give you a few seconds to catch up. I said, when you're caught between a rock and a hard place, choose 
the rock. Oh, what a tangled web we may weave. All we like sheep, we have gone astray. There is none righteous, no, not one. We have all made mistakes. We have all made wrong turns. We have all made bad decisions. And some of us are in the midst of entanglement. But as the songwriter says, in times like these, we need a savior. And in times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very, very sure that your anchor is gripping on solid rock. The rock I talk about is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. The rock is Jesus. He's the only one. So be very sure, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips some solid rock. So when you're caught in between and you don't know what to do, you can't look up, you can't look left, you can't look right, just look up. Choose the rock. Choose the rock. You have made mistakes. You have made mistakes and some of it have, have caught up to you and you don't know how to get out. Choose the rock. This rock, friends, is Jesus. So let's see what Abraham do. Let's see if Abraham takes that same advice I'm giving to you. <laughs> the Bible says, and we're going to continue reading a little bit more, and I'm going to wrap. Verse 11, I recap it. The matter distressed Abraham greatly. Because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you. Because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make, God is speaking here, the son of the slave into a nation also because he is your offspring. <laughs> Have mercy. Have mercy. Abraham chooses God. Abraham stopped listening to Sarah. God says to Abraham, don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> Cast them out. Yes. But I won't let them die. As a matter of fact, Abraham, I will make of Ishmael a great nation too. Because he is your seed. I know it's a hard thing that Sarah has asked you to. But Abraham, listen to me. Go ahead. Do it. I got you. The boy will live. I got you. Now, for the first time, Abraham listens to Sarah, but after he gets approval from God. <laughs> I'm going to give you this for free because I have, I have to wrap. I have to wrap it up. I'm giving this one for free. <laughs> when you have to choose between what your spouse wants or what God wants, choose God. <laughs> Choose God. I said, when you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, and I'm not calling Sarah a hard place, but I'm calling Jesus the rock. Choose the rock, whatever your circumstances. Abraham's love for God finally supersedes, finally surpasses his love for Sarah. Finally, Abraham gets it, and it will prepare him for his supreme test on Moriah, which is to come. Sarah has put him in some very hard positions. But in the end, Abraham chose the rock. Friends, who will you choose today? We are all broken people. We have all made mistakes. 
But God has a plan to save us out of these mistakes. All we have to do is choose Jesus. This rock is Jesus. Have a blessed night, friends. Really beautiful. Good evening, everyone. I guess by, by now you are used to hear, hearing me saying good evening, everyone. <laughs> Once again, my wife and I, on behalf of the family Black Ministries, wish to thank you for spending your precious time with our family, with the family of God. We hope that you have been richly blessed by tonight's presentation. I am. We want to thank uh, Elder Alvaranga for this beautiful presentation. We, 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 we learn uh, uh, what we have to do when we are doing a right and a place. Okay, so. We want to thank us, our senior minister, Van Francis, for this beautiful song. So we give you, we give you a rendezvous for tomorrow night at the same time, 7 p.m. for a similar presentation. Thank you. Very good, very good. So, um, Elder Alvarenga, uh, last night I mentioned that we will have Priscilla and Aquila with us. Somebody called me today to ask me <laughs> who are Priscilla and Aquila. I, I guess they've seen Aquila. Is Priscilla there? There she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, Priscilla. <laughs> Live. Yes. Nice to see you. Beautiful couple. If anyone, any one of our viewers wants to know why we call them Priscilla and Aquila, come to First Wife Place. We'll tell you. There's a nice pamphlet written just about them. You will meet <laughs> them, all right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Nice to see you tonight. Continued blessing in preaching the word of God. Awesome, awesome. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. And every Wednesday night, you may see them on this channel at 7.30 for our Wednesday night prayer meeting. So tonight, we've seen that after the birth of Ishmael, Sarah has become very bitter. She has changed, although she was the one who introduced the third person, right, in their circle. <laughs> I have a lot of things to say about it, but we don't have time because, you know, man, you need to read our mind. We don't really mean that. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. We're going to go back. When you are caught between a rock and a hard place, choose the rock. Choose the anchor, Jesus, and be sure your anchor holds on solid ground. When you are caught between what God says and what your wife says, choose what god says we are happy that at the end abraham chose the rock and that's what we're going to do we're going to lead each other to choose god Amen. okay while staying together we'll choose god <laughs> all right thank you so much everyone and now we're going to say a prayer for on our families and a benediction so we invite you uh, to pray with us. Dear Lord, our families are struggling with fear, confusion, disappointment. We need your strength and power in our lives. We need you, Lord, to give us direction. Tonight, we pray for our spouses and our children, our nuclear and extended families. Give us wisdom to make the best choices for our families. Give us grace to trust in you even when we don't see immediate answer. Give us hope 
to carry on in spite of the circumstances around us. We thank you for having, for hearing and answering our prayers. We thank you for your constant care and peace. And now the Lord bless you families and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen and amen. Good night, everyone. Yeah. Until tomorrow night. Oh. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many of y'all know that we're a part of the family of God this morning? Let me ask that one more time. How many of us are glad that we are a part of the family of God this morning?